It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Straw. Eddie Henry back here in Sheffield. Uh, before I get to Sheffield, you've just been in Antigua. Uh, I think you suggested it was business. Uh, anything you share with us? No, just uh, internal stuff, really. Just a bit of strategy uh, with the team. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot going on at the moment globally and just prepared for a very busy couple of months and year and an interesting landscape for boxing. Got to make sure that we're on it. We're um, thinking on our feet. And, and ready for what may come. Good stuff. Uh, Dalton Smith is a Peter. Is it an element of this fight being harder than people are thinking? Mm, for sure. You know, I think sometimes people who might not know a huge amount about Jose Zapida might just say, oh yeah, you know, it's a Mexican, going to be a tough fight. But let's be honest, this is a step up well beyond anywhere Dalton Smith's ever fought before. And sometimes you bring over a name, but you rarely bring over a name that can really punch. You know, and that's the jeopardy and the danger in this fight. Dalton Smith does like to engage. Sometimes he gets caught. And if he does that against Jose Zapata, he'll be in trouble. So he's got to be razor sharp in this fight. But it's a big step up to world level. You know, somewhere he's never really been close to before. And obviously looking down the card, it's fair to say you've got four fights on there that could quite easily go either way. If I was to ask you which one do you suspect an upset could happen in or... Depends. I mean, I actually think that Jimmy Joe Flynn is probably a slight favourite in the Campbell Hatton fight. Again, he won't be with the bookies because people will just presume we wouldn't put Campbell Hatton in a fight he could lose, if that makes sense. Um, Nico Leviar's in a very tough fight. I mean, is there even a favourite in the Sandy Ryan fight? You know, it's very, very close to call against Terry Harper. Um, put it this way, I'd, I'd be very surprised if all A-side fighters won this, won this fight. And I think it's a great card because every fight, you know, is, is a 50-50 or a 60-40 fight. They're super competitive. And I, I really think we get a great night of boxing on Saturday. Yeah, you touched on Harper and Ryan. I think it's probably one of the best fights on the card. Uh, who's the favourite in that fight, in your opinion? I mean, I like the way Terry spoke up there. Now, bear in mind, she's really not someone that likes to engage in a little bit of verbal warfare, but I thought she really held her own. Sandy's very good, very strong. She's put a lot of time and effort into this camp. You know, I felt she was very unlucky against Jessica McCaskill, but Terry's very good as well. I think Terry's going to box and then fight and then move and then do it again and then do it again. And over those two minute rounds, you know these rounds are going to be very close. Sandy's going to be aggressive, try and walk her down, try and put a dent in her. Real 50-50 fight. Definitely sitting on the vents for this one. Obviously, it's a solid card all round. You know, when can we expect, uh, you know, have you got any cards in play that you can maybe talk about a little bit in the, in the next yeah, few I mean, weeks? Well, we've got uh, March 23rd, obviously, here, April 13th, with Gill against Barrett in Manchester. It's a great card. Um, then you've got April 27th now is Peter McGraw in Liverpool. May the 25th is the rescheduled date for Catrell against uh, Taylor. And obviously now you've got uh, Paddy Donovan against Lewis Ritson and a lot of big fights to be added to that card as well. Already planning for June um, with some big fights. You've got, you know, we've got Lee Wood, we've got Josh Warrington, we've got Katie Taylor. We've got all these fights to get out. That's to fit in around the 5v5. Obviously Fury Usyk May the 18th on the zone as well. Haney against Garcia April 20th. Mungia against Canelo on the zone on May the 4th. So yeah, we've just got to keep, you know, making these these big nights and, and making sure we keep focusing on the UK with cards like this that are very competitive. So I want to get your opinion on Dillian White's performance. What did you think of him coming back and you know the, the way he won the fight and also will you be speaking to him to work with him again? I haven't seen the fight. I, I didn't know if there was footage of it. Um, Dillian's a good fighter. You know, he's strong. He's pretty honest in his interview, you know, where he sort of said, look, I'm not getting any younger. He's still a handful. Might not be physically at his best compared to maybe five, six years ago. But he's going to want to jump into those big fights. I don't know where he'll be allowed to fight, i.e. UK and, and Saudi. Um, but, you know, hopefully he can get himself into a big fight. Will I speak to him? I don't know. You know, I, I don't have a problem with him. I've, I've always got on great with Dillian White. Um, I didn't hear from him after he, he failed the, the test for the AJ fight. 
but you know I'm, I'm sure he's going to be looking to be in some big fights in the division. Uh, and then Tyson Fury, uh, apparently he mentioned yesterday he's 18 stone 6, which I've just been looking through a box check. I think he's 20 pounds lighter than he was when he walked into the ring against Ngannou. Yeah, yeah. I mean, looks looks great. Looks very slim, training very hard, and he'll need to to win that fight. You know, he's not an idiot. He knows how good Usyk is. He knows he'll have to be at his best, and hopefully he can get himself physically ready to win that fight. We saw a report recently about Chris Eubank Jr. may have left Wasserman. Have you heard anything? If so... Will you be speaking to Chris Eubank Jr.? As I understand it, he's still with Wasserman. Who who knows? Um, yeah, look, Chris Eubank's a you know a fighter that's a big draw, um, but we're happy to work with Calla and Wasserman on Chris Eubank. So your understanding is still he's still with them then. As I understand it, yeah. Um, Conor Ben, the Pacquiao uh, Ben thing in uh, Riyadh, was that like a publicity stunt, or is there any actual legs on that? Yeah, big legs. They want the fight. We're happy to do the fight. Again, we have to see where that fight could take place, but it wasn't publicity. I mean, we were talking and we were in negotiations about that fight for a long time. Um, and when they were there, media went mad. They got together in a head to head and, you know, we, we saw the momentum of that fight. So it's definitely a possibility. Joshua knocked out uh, Ngannou. I think a guy that you, I think you previously said wouldn't win an English title. Now that you've seen Ngannou twice, do you think he could win an English title? I said, even after the Tyson Fury fight, he could beat and he could lose to any heavyweight in the top 100. Uh, the, the honest answer is, I don't know. You know, like, I would like to see him fight again in a ring. F until he got dropped in the first round, I thought he looked all right. You know, I thought he looked awkward and tricky and huge and dangerous. But he got hit by a massive shot, and that's what can happen in the division. It definitely can. And uh, Boatsy Yard, there's rumours that that may end up on pay-per-view, either TNT or Sky. Have you heard anything about that? And do you think that's got... A, is it a pay-per-view? I saw Yard's comment. I mean, it's not a pay-per-view on zone, but maybe it is on Sky, you know. I mean, we've got... Obviously, Sky wanted to do catch against Taylor on pay-per-view. We did it non-pay-per-view. That's what we're looking to do. And if we did Boatsy v Yard... We'd look to do it non-pay-per-view on the zone, but it's not, it's not that easy. So I don't think it's a massive pay-per-view fight, but it's a good fight. And hopefully those guys can make it non-pay-per-view and give it to the fans. And just a word on Ryan Garcia. Obviously, we've seen all the stuff he's been coming out with. I, I sense if something goes wrong with him in the build-up to this fight, the vultures are going to be out looking for who to blame. Uh, who ultimately holds the responsibility for deciding whether this guy's in the right frame of mind to fight? I mean... Really the people closest to him and the ones that are around him a lot. You know, you don't know how often Golden Boy speak to him. Are they at his house? Are they in his training camp? Probably not. You know, I think I've got enough respect for Derek James that I'm almost positive that if Ryan Garcia wasn't 100% physically and mentally, Derek either wouldn't let him fight or wouldn't be involved in the fight. And at the moment, he's still training. So we don't see the ins and outs of what happens at camp. If he's performing in camp, you know, if he's, you know... I was going to show you this picture. It's a picture I saw Derek James watching Ryan train the other day. Yeah, but if Derek feels that Ryan Garcia is not up to the races, he shouldn't be training and he should, you know, just say, I'm out. So I, I don't believe Derek would stay in the camp if Ryan wasn't performing in training. I don't know, but at the end of the day, you know... You can only rely on the people that supposedly care for him to make those decisions. As I understand it, camp's okay. There's four weeks to go. The, the behaviour is out of the ordinary. Oscar said he's trolling. Who knows? Now, as I said to Devin last night, you just got to stay professional and be ready to perform. I've got one last thing. I think last year I asked you a question during Ramadan, which went viral all over TikTok, etc. So I know you've tried that fasting this year. You did like an 80 odd year one, uh, 80 odd hour one. Uh, are you going to try uh, one of the fasts this year? No, I mean the the fasts um, of Ramadan are a lot. I mean I say they're a lot easier than the one that I did. At least you can eat at certain times of the day, but actually it's a realistic. Uh, I say challenge respectfully, do you know what I mean? It's like a, the timings are actually doable, do you know what I mean? They still require a huge amount of discipline, which is obviously key as well. But um, I think they have a lot of health benefits, you know? I think we all eat too much anyway. But 
yeah, I um, the one that I did, what was it, 72 hours or something like that? Hard sunset, work. Rise to sunset. Yeah. So it's what, 4 a.m., yeah, 6 p.m. Yeah. I mean, difficult. Mm. And, you know, that's one of the things I admire is the discipline of, of, and it's not, you know, it doesn't seem to be a, oh, you know, oh, I'll just, let me just have a little, but it's, it's absolutely not. Mm. And that's, you know, that's, that's to be respected. Eddie, thank you for your time. Cheers. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 